Okay, D. Well, you've talked in the last bit about speaking to you what the brains behind your operation or some of the brains behind it. So you've got all the information. You've got what's fancied, who the who the form gurus have picked up. So then what happens? Um, I would, you know, I, I, I would then go and back the horses, which have been suggested to me. And um, I would deal with, like I said already, I would ring up the, the, the nerve centre of these firms and, you know, people would say, like, oh, why, why, why is he allowed to do it? And I suppose our strike record is pretty good with the prices, you know. So then I would ring the firms, place the bets, and then we would trade them accordingly to what, what, what we felt. So did you watch the races? Um, listen, I love golf. I walk around the golf course looking at watching the races. I'm off a nine at the moment. I have been four. Without my phone, I reckon I could have got to three. But uh, it, it, them phones, they are an addiction. I'd love to be able to not look at it, but human nature says you've got to look at your investment. So you've talked about how you do it now. You've been very forthright. People at home will be getting ideas thinking uh, they can probably emulate you there. If all of a sudden all your contacts, all your men dried up, you said to me once in the very salubrious settings of the toilets at Cheltenham, <laughs> there's more than one way to skin a cat in reference to bookmakers. Do you think that if this way you do it now went, you and uh, Simon would come up with another way and you'd still come out on top? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do. You know, might not win the amounts that we have won in the past, but, you know... Or, or, or lost, you know, we might just, I don't know. I'm sure we would. I'm sure we would. But there is, you know, it's like, you know, getting on, you know what I mean? I do believe the firms know, and I, and I you know, if they are watching, I, they have my word. I'm a big man of my word, a big man of my word. If they play game with me, I don't never slip anyone into them. And it definitely is the cheaper version, the way they've got it at the moment. They've got me where they want me. The limits are, they can't get any lower. If they get any lower, they might as well pull the shutters down and go home. Because it is the year 2018 after all. And then you could, you know, I've slipped people in. You wouldn't believe the bets we've got off of people. You just wouldn't believe. Prior, prior to them me dealing with them face to face. They stand for it, but, you know, there you go. So a lot of these people that you um, get your marks from, I assume you don't see them face to face no. from month to month. No. I mean, one of the questions Ben wanted to know is when did you suddenly, when did you decide to become a lone wolf, so to speak, and go out for yourself? Um, I don't know. I've, well, I've always sort of ducked and dived while, you know, whilst even working for for the Bob Stock firm, you know, and and Jimmy, like you know, I just. Um, like I said earlier, I've always bookies don't want to be dealing with the with the live sharks. That's all I want to talk to. That's I only want to speak to them. You know, let them have the you know I don't like using the word the mug punters, but you know I want to be I want to be in with the with, with the clever ones, the Alan Timms of this world and the Johnny Lights of this world. So well connected. The um, now if you believe all the whinging that you see, people whose accounts close, all the rest of it. There's a hell of a lot of professional punters out there. But I seek out professional punters to try and talk to. And in reality, they either don't want to talk to you because they're well under the radar, or they just don't really, that many don't exist. So I'm assuming there must be a really special attribute that you need to succeed a lifetime as you as have as a professional punter. What would you say that is? Composure. You would never, ever, ever get me at it if I was doing my money. Impossible. It. You, you've seen where I live, Simon. It is an impossibility they ever, ever get it back. They would never get me at the chase. Impossible. It can't happen. I could, I could not have a bet. If you said to me, you can't have a bet thing for the rest of your life, I could do it like that. No problem, easily. So that's the game, not not chasing. So what's yeah, your? Yeah, listen. Everyone backs winners and everyone backs losers. But if you can just 
hold yourself. See you later. <laughs> If you can have the control over yourself, and and may I add, the people I speak to on a daily basis, they would have that attribute. They would have that. You know what I mean? There's no. I can remember I used to sit there over Sunday and I used to sling away a hundred quid on the Man United Liverpool game. I totted it up one year. How much I lost it. I vowed I'd never do it again, and I've never done it since. You know what I mean? There's no such thing as. A chuck away bet, you know. What I mean, this is it, you know. This is this pays the bills, and I did. I did invest well along the way as well. I did, you know, you know, it ain't, you know, we got money, we bought properties, but it all initially come from the gambling, yeah. Right, so nobody's gonna see you sort of crouched down in front of the telly with an imaginary whip screaming one home. Impossible. So, what. Now we've we've mentioned before that you know you've you've had a few ups and downs with racecourse bookies, and you mentioned you got a good a good relationship with some of the major bookmakers. Now, what's your general opinion of the bookmaking industry as it is now? Right, I suppose we've got to mention the machines, haven't we? They are so morally wrong, so so morally morally wrong. I'll give you a story. I was driving home from Goodwood five five years ago. Alison rang me up. She said, I've got some bad news. You automatically think of the kids. She said, well, don't worry, don't worry. It's not one of ours. She said, do you know Oliver at the end of the road? So I said, yeah. She said, he's committed suicide. I... Spoke to the family, I was at the funeral. That boy's downfall was their machines. He was 18 years of age, he got addicted. Which is their intention. They are, forget that, we put little signs up. What a load of, what a load of rubbish. You know what I mean? They're addictive. End of. This young kid didn't want to let his mum and dad down. Borrowed a, borrowed a monkey off of Wonga.com. Another outfit. Borrowed the monkey. The monkey turned into two grand. Done the two grand. Now he's got let, getting letters through the door. He's had to go to dad. He's held his hands up. Dad's obviously giving him a bollocking. Right. Dad squared the debt off. Don't do it again. The guy's addicted. 18 years of age. Same again. He started again. On the machines, he thinks, oh no, I'll go to Wonga again. Wonga are going to lend him. they just got their two grand for their monkey. They're going to give him another go. They're still in front if they don't get the monkey. Anyway, I ain't got two of the rest. Starts getting the letters. Bang. Slings himself in front of a train. From them machines. So if the government are watching, man up. We know you get plenty of money out of it. But morally, they're wrong. If you sat on a, if you sat on the corner of a street sticking a needle in their arm, you'd go and nick someone. They should be banned. Full stop. A member of my family, on Alison's side, won't mention his name. Done a fortune on their machines. A fortune cost him his marriage. That's just people I know personal. It must be littered, the country, with people with the same stories. Right, Dean, that came out of nowhere. It was quite unexpected. We had to stop there for a minute and have a little chat because um, we didn't want it to be inconsiderate with the next question. But it's a different thing, so we will ask it. Anybody watching this obviously now knows to stay away from those machines, but if they got a, a bit of ambition to be, be a punter, is, is there a way anybody can get wise enough, quick enough to earn a living as you have now, or have those days gone? Um, I think they're gone. I think they're gone, personally. You know, you can't... All these firms, you can't get on, full stop. You you know, 
Joe Public, you just you just can't get on. You are, there's no one more experienced than me and than the people I talk to in who try their hardest to get on, and that is it. You you cannot get on. You know you can play you can play on you know you can play on Betfair and but that that's 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 governor in it. That seems that seems to win Betfair. You know if it's too good too big a price, it's normally too big a price for a reason. I suppose these days getting your tank together on the race course by following in faces and people that's gone as well because the faces there's don't no, have it on. There's anymore. no faces there. There's no. They were good times. They were good times. You know I remember. They were good, good times, you know, the the banter and all that. But, you know, Barry, Dennis yelling and screaming and you know, there was just Lulu Mendoza, there was another one, Michael Mendoza, there was one, bless him. Yeah, yeah. I've got to mention, when I said to you about, I want to mention this guy, right, because he he, he wouldn't have been at the forefront of making noise or one thing or another. But you talk about I'm a family man. I prided on my I prided myself on following certain people in life, saying I want to be like him. I want to be like him. A guy called Ralph Leverage. He was the ultimate family man. God bless him. He recently passed away, and I always remember when I was just had my Harry, saying I want to be a dad like Ralph. And they've just lost their dad. And what a gentleman he was. A great man. Great man. And then, of course, there was the times when the NJPC come along and the people lost their businesses. You know, the likes of Billy Brown and Rocky. You know, they was all good guys. All good guys. All good, good guys. You know what I mean? You know, no change. You do need change. You do need change. However, some things are best left untouched. And it is it's supposed to it's supposed to be better for me financially, but as a as a game, the game ain't what it was. So looking back, sat in a very, very nice house in uh, Leafy Essex, would you have changed anything you've done? Um Not really, Simon. I would like I think yeah. Working for home ain't what it's cracked up to be, you know what I mean? It can be a bit lonely sitting here, you know what I mean? But, you know, listen, I play golf with my mates, you know what I mean? That's good fun, good banter. Yep. Dean Valentine, thanks very much.